Hey guys and welcome back to Plasmatic Productions. Here at the channel we cover so many things, from Lego games to Batman Arkham to Spider-Man, Star Wars, real life vlogging, music, and so much more. My name is Plasmatic, and today we're going to be starting a ranking of all 68 characters in Lego Batman 2 DC Superheroes. Uh, this series will be split into a number of parts going from worst to best. Um, I recently got COVID-19, so my voice is super dead and I feel like crap, but to not waste any time, let's get started. Starting off this list, we have Vicky Vale. The bottom part of this list is going to include a lot of lackluster characters, but we gotta get through them so we can get to the real heavy hitters. <laughs> Vicky Vale was a love interest of Bruce Wayne in the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman movie. Uh, she also appeared as a love interest in the comics, but most people know her from the movie. I put her here at the bottom of the list because she doesn't have any abilities and I find her design pretty boring. That's pretty much it. Lois Lane is up next. I think you all know that Lois Lane is Superman's long-term love interest. They've been married for a while now and they have a son together. She's here on the list because she also has no abilities and a pretty boring design. She's got a little identification badge on her shoulder, but that's really it. The goons take up the next four sections. They all have no abilities, so we're just judging based on aesthetics. The Riddler goon is the worst of these goons because I find the jumpsuit is pretty bland. It's all just one shade of green for the most part. I think the question marks and the detailing on the jacket are cool, putting it above the previous two sections, uh, but it's not enough to put it any higher. I'm gonna try to speed through these goons as fast as possible. This henchman goes above the other because of the dual tone orange and purple jacket. I think it looks neat, but we'll see it executed better later on this list. Alright, next we have the Mime Goon. The black and white mime with the French hat looks plucked out of an old silent film, and I would love to see the Joker use some mime goons in the future. I respect the art of mime, and I think that mimes are pretty cool, but also if it's shot really well, I think it could be really, really creepy. The clown goons' colors don't go together at all, which is part of why I love it. It's so ridiculous and outlandish, and feels like something the joke would make his hench people wear just to embarrass them. There's also a pretty detailed back printing with the Joker's face on it, which is pretty neat. They've also got some nostalgia for me because whenever I think of like a Lego Batman goon from my childhood, I think of them. You know, my first Lego Batman set had a slightly different minifigure, but it was pretty similar to this one of a Joker henchman in it. Finally, we're done with the goons. We move on to Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson was the original Robin who grew up to become Nightwing, a total badass character that we'll see later on. I love Dick Grayson, he's my favorite character in all superhero media. However, this version is entirely useless. He's a great go-to civilian character if you wanted to pretend to be a random civilian, but there's no reason to play as him. He's got a cool jacket, though. Bruce Wayne looks dapper in the suit. He's really rocking that light blue suit. I kind of want to try to pull this off one of these days. You know, my sister's wedding is in September, so I don't want to wear my black suit, and I'll probably end up wearing it anyway. But I want to try something lighter for some summer events. Okay, I've been really been rambling. Bruce is useless too, but at least he looks slick. Alfred! We've reached the heart and soul of the Batman universe. Alfred was originally written as just Batman's butler, but over the years, he was developed into Bruce's father figure, and a grandfather figure for the rest of the Bat family. He's got his little platter that he swings around, and it's really fun to play as Alfred and just beat up every villain in Gotham. Pulp 
police officer, the generic police officer. This guy actually shows up in a cutscene where he does... nothing. You know, I can just see this guy eating donuts in the patrol car sitting at that corner that I always jaywalk across. Anyway, he's got a gun, so he's more useful than the others below him. And that police uh, uniform, you know, it looks great. Gotta love his facial hair, too. Real hair. Commissioner Gordon never ages right in video games. In the Arkham games, he started out as an old man in Arkham Asylum, then got older in Arkham City, then suddenly de-ages like 30 years in Arkham Knight. In the LEGO games, Gordon looks the exact same for the first two games, then suddenly disappears for the third, transforming into Gary Oldman, then he comes back in DC Supervillains as a really old guy wearing aviators. I don't know why I just ranted all about Commissioner Gordon and his strange aging. You know, Gordon is just a cooler version of the police officer. I mean, I gotta say, I like the police officer's facial hair better. You know, I respect that hat too, but Gordon's been there since the very first appearance of Batman. So I gotta put him as high as I can. He's also, you know, got the gun and the tie and the big police badge. You know, they're neat too. Every character from here on out is going to be a named, costumed hero or villain. Pretty much, at least. The Lexbot is just another goon, but I really like the design on this guy. The Lexbot has a really unique build, and there's nothing else quite like it. He's got two blasters, one on each arm, and he's got a fun, creepy sort of walk. If there was a live-action version of this, it would be legitimately frightening. Like, imagine if Lex Luthor had a small army of slightly broken down terminators creepy the Lexbot is a really unique build and there's nothing else quite like it he's got mosquito dang okay gonna redo